Snapchat filters? Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. You're, you're the one that's like... What's up? We're back! Thank you for boarding the UFO Unlocked podcast. Bing! <laughs> Alright, well, all right, all right, sure. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, end a preamble, but I'll, I guess I'll just figure it out in editing. Sure. Well, my, my timer hit zero, so I kind of had to because I have like two people on here, but and they are expecting stuff, I guess. Sure. I didn't know there was a timer on mine, but. Thank you well, for yeah. boarding the Level Unlock Podcast Airlines. Um, today we have a lot of uh, great entertainment on the block. We have uh, PlayStation Five news on your screen in front of you. We also have Nintendo Direct stuff and a surprise news thing that happened this morning because Microsoft doesn't know what time is and they just decide to <laughs> yeah. do shit in the late hours of the or the early hours of the morning. Business. Business. For those riding in uh, coach... Well, you're not going to see any of this because we, you know, you could have just bought up a little bit, a little bit better of a class ticket. But no, you had to go with the cheap one. All right. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hello there, bud. What's going on there, guys? It's, it's episode 86 of the Level Unlock podcast. It's only it, three of us. It's all, yeah. It is only three of us. I don't think we've ever had this combination before. Never. We yeah, never so. have. No, I think the only for yeah, yeah. I think this is like the only three combination we. Yeah, I think I'm thinking this... about it too hard. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, just you know, reminiscing about the good old days, the good old days <laughs> of the podcast when I was in my prime. When I was in my prime. Back before summer games fest, and me being perpetually tired because of all the fucking news dropping. And next week we got Tokyo Game Show, so that's going to be pretty cool. <sighs> okay, but that should be it. That should be it for the re like the year, except for the game awards. So, <laughs> Whew, boy howdy, it's almost done. That's what I keep telling myself. It's almost done. Yeah, you're almost out of the woods. I uh, almost, yeah. And then holiday starts. And then the holiday. Yep. But hey, before that, we got we got spook temper. Oh, by the way, guys, do you remember the twenty first night of September? Love was changing the minds of pretenders. Oh. Badia, say do you remember? Yeah. Badia, dancing in September. Badia. Underst understood. <laughs> Pitter patter. All right. <laughs> Pump the brakes there, bud. Nah, never. Like I said, I'm tired. Hey, Mark, what'd you do this week? Oh, shit. Uh,. I guess I did primarily school work. MBA stuff's hard, but uh, stick with it if you like writing. <laughs> um, but beyond that, as far as games have been going, uh, I, uh, we got into some Risk of Rain. We've been playing that a bunch, which is... I don't even really know how to explain it. It's its one of those uh, like bullet hell kind of games, but you just kind of run through it, gain abilities... Monsters out spawn all the time. You gain money, get more abilities, and then uh, rinse and repeat. And it's one of those style of games, but it's just really entertaining. Like the uh, game loop is just really great, and especially whenever you have a couple of friends, it's pretty fun too. I think I don't think there's a game out there that isn't better with friends. Yeah, yeah, none that I can really think of. Um, unless you want something like super relaxing, then I can understand it being like better without other people. Because I don't know. Yeah. Oh man, I can't even imagine like Death Stranding, like co-op. It would I be mean, fucking dope. It would be dope, but then you would have like the asshole friend that just didn't know how to play. Yeah, I guess so. So then you're just like getting in fights. That's true. Like, if you guys, if you did it right, and, it, like, it worked out, then I feel it could be done well, but that might be the issue, then. 
Like, if you and I, Mark, if we played it, if we did a co-op run, like, it would be, it would run perfectly. But if, like, you and Nate were to run it, I'm sure Nate would run this shit to the ground. I'd find a way to fuck something up. Yeah, he would. <laughs> <laughs> like, not even on purpose and not because I'm, like, being the dickhead friend. I'm just, I get you... lost in games like that and I'm just like, what's going on? Yo, I fell nine times the entire campaign. That's it? In my, in, yeah. I, Holy my, shit. At the credit screen, it said total tumb tumbles taken nine. I was just like, fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Out of my 60 some hours of playing. Yo, I think I had like nine tumbles in the first like hour of the game. I think like three or four of them were in like the first hour. And then, yeah, that's pretty much where it, where it started having a, a bit more of a bigger distribution. Oh, I need to get back into that game. It's been a, a week or two. It's been a minute. <laughs> what else have I been playing? Let's take a look. Uh, You're playing Slime played... Rancher. Oh yeah, fucking... The game was on sale earlier this week, and I didn't really have any expectations for it. I thought I was just literally just gonna go to some random world, like find some slimes and like put them into a cage and that was it. Like, I thought that was going to be the extent of what the gameplay was. But little did I know is that, like, at the same time, you go around and you also collect, like, food and stuff to feed your slimes. And then as they're eating, like, they shit out, like, crystals and shit. And you vacuum all of those up and you can sell them on the market for money. And then with your money, you can get more pens or, like, different upgrades, like jetpacks or more inventory space or weapons and shit. Like, it's... It's a, an incredibly, like, complicated game, and there's a lot more to it than I initially expected. Especially whenever you get into, like, different types of slimes and how you can breed them and all of that sort of thing. It's pr pretty wild. Like, and it's also kind of a, or a pretty relaxing game. There's a couple of different levels of difficulties in it, so if you don't want any kind of enemies and you just want to kind of explore the world, you can do that. Or if you want something that's semi-relaxing but has a few enemies, you can do that. Or if you want something more hardcore, there's an option there as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I it's it's weird, but I, I'd say I'd recommend that game. I, I've only played it for about four hours now, and I've barely touched the surface of what it has to offer for me. Um, but it, I, I'm really enjoying it. Like, I, It's weird for me saying that I recommend Slime Rancher, but at this <laughs> point I do. <laughs> I never thought in my in my days that I would ever say Slime Rancher good. Yeah, like I never thought it'd be like I bought Slime Rancher and it was it was like I should tell my friends about this game because it's actually pretty good. <laughs> well, it was going to be one of those things that it's going to be like, all right, I'm why did I buy this and it's like completely forget about it. But I've been pretty good about that lately. Uh. At the same time, at the same time, I purchased uh, Metro Exodus because it was on sale this week. Uh, you could get like all of the Metro games um, for really cheap, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, I really like the early, earlier Metro titles because of like the the tension of being inside and how dark it all was. Like the the environment was just really what brought me into those kind of games, and Metro still has to kind of bring me there. Um, but the biggest issue I have with it is that it crashes probably every half hour to an hour of me playing. Oof. So, and it's not like a little crash. It's like one of those things that like fucks up like my USB controller because it has some kind of integration with Corsair like IQ. So like it fucks up my keyboard, like I can't all tab out of it. And then it's, it's more of a hassle like trying to get out of it than anything else. So that's, that's a game. Um, yeah, well, I'll let you know if I have have more information about that later down the line. Uh, we played some Among Us this week. That's oh, yeah. fucking always a great time. Uh, download it. It's five bucks. Um, even the uh, like public multiplayer is pretty fun. I I played that a few times by myself, and I still actually had a pretty solid amount of time, or pretty solid good time. Um, every time I played it, which was kind of odd. Um, there was, like, one game where people didn't talk too much, but, like, I think I still won, so it didn't really matter to me. Um, <laughs> that game relies so much on just communication. Yeah, in that, in that chat room and everybody kind of speaking the same language. 
Did did any of you guys see that? Um, well, one that Soldier Boy streams on Twitch, and yeah. two, he played uh, Among Us, and it is hilarious. No, I have to I have to see if he has a lot of that or something. That'd be pretty interesting. Yo, what's up with all these like older like rappers now streaming on Twitch? Like T Pain, yeah, T Pain. Fucking T Pain, he's so rad watching him play like Ghost of Tsushima. Because <laughs> uh, you can't really do too much. I don't. I don't know. Maybe you can. I don't. I don't live on the other side of the country, but <laughs> I have a feeling that you know, there's probably some industries that are still having issues with uh, coping from Dave. Yep. Goddamn Dave. So, you know, free time, gotta gotta stream some Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ghost of Sushi. <laughs> um, what else did I do this week? Played some papers, please. That's always fucking great. Uh Is is that kinda like your relaxing game? Yeah, or it's definitely one of them. Yeah, like it's definitely a one of those games where I cannot Well, if you beat the game, it's a lot more relaxing because you can do this like the endless mode, um, and then you don't really have to worry about things happening and all of that sort of stuff and how long everything takes. So that's significantly more relaxing. Where the story is a bit, re yeah, it's the story is pretty relaxing, but at the same time, you still have to worry about getting people through it. So there's still a little bit of anxiety there. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it. It also has a pretty pretty cool art style if you are interested in those kind of games. Uh, I believe it's also the same developer as The Legend of the Obra Dim, if I remember I correctly. I think so, yeah. I know. I think it's at least the same publisher. Yeah, I'm gonna double check. Yep, it's the, it's the same developer, Lucas Pope. So if you've ever played The Leg uh, Return of the Obra Dim, it's a uh, by the same guy and has the same sort of art style but more 2D-ish but it's the same kind of weird dark you know kind of feeling to it uh yeah that's that's my week I'm done talking <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about you James oh boy howdy did I play some video games so it all started with me having a sore throat and no voice so that was fun for an entire day. I got to be a kid again. I got to eat popsicles all day. That was pretty neat. But I did, the day after, play two video games that I streamed. One was Spelunky 2. Ooh. Now, Mark, that, that ooh makes me, sound, makes me believe that you have played the original Spelunky. Not much. Uh, okay, <laughs> but you at least know of it. Nate, are you familiar yeah. with Spelunky? I am. Okay, so think of Spelunky, except more bullshit and more oh. fun. Okay. In Spelunky 2, they added moles that just run through the ground and just pop out of nowhere and just ruin your day. And this is in the starting area, so that's fun. For those who aren't familiar with Spelunky, it's a game about spelunking and getting treasure and really generated. So every t every game, every run is different. Spelunky 2 adds more, you know, I just feel like a little bit tighter controls, more bullshit, things that make you just want to yeet your controller halfway across the universe. And then... You have those moments of, holy shit, I did it. I, 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 pa I passed this, this floor. I'm the best player in the world. So that's fun. I also, I would highly recommend it. It's only like 20 bucks on PlayStation. It's coming to like, I think, everything else soon. Or no, I think it's coming to PC soon. So I would recommend Spelunky 2. To 10 out of 10, would recommend. The next game I played was Call of Duty... Black Ops Cold War. Ooh. The open the, the open alpha was out. Yep. Oh, okay. I played it. How and it was? I like it. It's Call of Duty. 
It sure is expected. Call of Duty. But you know what? It's fun. It's fun when you're you're just playing around like you just want to turn your brain off and shoot kill things. Bang bang. Shoot, bang kill. Yeah, shoot bang kill. But like was it did you was like the environment cool? Like did anything good? No. I mean the the nineteen eighties looked pretty cool. The nineteen eighty art style style looked pretty cool. <clears throat> Other than that, I mean, it was, it's, yeah, it's, it's literally just Call of Duty. It's nothing groundbreaking, at least from the alpha. Nothing that makes me go, wow, this might get me interested in Call of Duty again. It's just Call of Duty. <laughs> the only thing, the only real reason I'm going to buy it is for zombies. Hell yeah. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. Who doesn't? want to play fucking not who doesn't like nazi zombies i mean really i don't know the the like i haven't played the last few zombies games or the last ones that have zombies in it so like i know that they've definitely taken some weird design choices into like their maps and how all the like this the story or whatever happens like the last one I played was like Black Ops 1 so really <laughs> um... yeah it's been been a while since the like I don't know. I've actually played those kind of games. I think I played a little bit of Black Ops 4's um, Zombies. And it was weird because I think George Romero was in it. In one yes. of the maps. Which is weird. But anyway. It, this one. The, the zombies in this one seem a lot more. Uh, at least from the, the teaser that they showed. It's a lot darker. A little bit more. Way more spooky. More more zombies on screen. More zombies, like, like the uh, World of War type zombies. Yeah, except for um, like this is, it's from what they've shown in the in the teaser, it's pitch black, and the only oh. light is from your flashlight. That does indeed sound spooky. Yeah, so that'd be pretty cool. Hopefully, it's good. I mean, I'm gonna yeah. buy it. I mean, zombies is always relatively good. Like, I imagine it should be fine. Yeah, even, like, the worst Nazi zombie stuff is still good. Yeah. Hope it has ray tracing support. I think it will. I think it's going to have ray tracing. I know at least the uh, the next gen version, or, like, the... I know, like, the PS5 and Series XS is going to have ray tracing support. So I would assume the PC version would as well. I guarantee the PC version would as well. Hope so. Speaking of, the... oh, go ahead. Sorry, I lost my thought. Have at it. <laughs> all, right, all right. Speaking of PlayStation Five, I pre-ordered a PlayStation Five. Yeah, you did. That was oh, a shit. that was a hoot and a half. Three eleven yeah, in the morning. Like... Yeah, three. Three eleven. I still have the screenshot from my uh, from the receipt. Hell yeah! So that's pretty cool. So I'm just waiting, waiting anxiously for that to pop in and so I can test it out, play around with it, get Call of Duty on that. What else did I do? Um, oh, uh, played Cyber Hunter, as always. Played Among Us, as always. Then one day, yesterday. Oh, no. I awaken <laughs> to a, an email from Steam saying that my buddy has sent me a game, has gifted me a game. <laughs> and uh, let me, uh, where is it? Uh, let me pull up Gmail real quick. And it was a wonderful, wonderful message. Dear Mr. J. Noodles, Ph.D. Esquire, <laughs> enjoy Hideo Kojima's magnum opus like I enjoy his magnum dong. You owe me. <laughs> Lord Dick Baggington the Third. He sent me a game called Anime Standing. 
Anime Standing is basically Death Stranding minus all of the fun. Anything that made it a good game. Exactly. The only thing that this game has on Death Stranding is that it has 100% more anime titties. Yeah. 100% more. It's a game where you run around as a waifu, big-titted waifu anime GF, and you collect boxes and kick a barrel and grab a body and drive the cyber truck, the actual cyber truck, across this boring wasteland where nothing happens until you get bored and you just stop playing or if you're crazy like me and decide to go for all of the stuff <laughs> it is a hundred and eight hours or 108 minutes of my life I will never get back 108 hours <laughs> oh Jesus if I played that game for 108 hours oh geez. just kill me now at the thought of it yeah so, Call of Duty, Spelunky, Death Strand, or Anime Standing. Anime Standing. Among Us, <laughs> Cyber Hunter. And, yeah, I guess we played that. Yeah, that's... that's. Oh, I got a uh, uh, message today from a, uh, a comment on one of my YouTube videos of... What was it? Um, uh, that game I'm speedrunning. What the hell is it called? Oh, uh, fruit, fruit, fruit All, stars? All Star Fruit Racing. There we go, that's close. So I, I uploaded a, a, a new run for one of the maps, for one of the tracks, and I get a, a comment from one of the developers of the game going, hey man, it's cool seeing people play game, or put videos of our game up here. I hope you're enjoying the game as much as we enjoyed making it. Here, check out this YouTube video of the new game that we're, that we're making. Cheers. And I look at that comment, I'm like, I don't have the heart to say that this game is a piece of shit. I do not have the heart in me to say that this game is atrocious and that I'm only playing it for the meme. But it was nice. It was nice that he, uh, that they, they, uh, commented. So that's pretty cool. That was my week. Nate. All right. What did you so, do this week? Um, my week. Hmm. What did I do this week? Tell me. Risk of rain. Um. Play some Among Us. Made two new friends in Among Us. Yeah, you did. Discord. Yeah, they are some interesting characters, but I fucked with them. They're chill. They seem fine. They just wanted to troll the whole time, which, like, I was okay with because I wasn't really, like, seriously, seriously playing. I was just fucking around. Um, that was dope. Oh. Among Us is solid. Um, I tried to play more Fear of Wolves, but <laughs> that game is only has European servers. And the other issue is that the only people that are ever playing that game are me and Brandon. And maybe <laughs> one random German boy or one random <laughs> Russian boy. Oof. Yikes. Yeah, they only have EU servers. And every time we play, we play at like 10, 11 at night. It's fucking 4 and 5 a.m. in the EU. So none of them are on. So we tried to play at 3 p.m. yesterday when it was like almost 10 I think and... you're assuming that people play that game. Yeah, you're just the assuming. The problem is, is, the first time we got on, there was like 30 people. And then all of a sudden, no one. Yeah, because they, they found a better game. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's only 30 people. It's like, how long does it take for 30 people to get distracted? A week or two? Yeah. I mean, true. True. It is accurate. I, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it, it's honestly a really cool concept, and like it's a fun game. It's just it has it sucks. nothing for it. Like nobody knows about this game, like at all. Yeah, it blows. I know about. I know all about that. 
There's a there's a game called Robo Puzzle Smash that's really really good. It's a lot of fun. It's a great little puzzle game, but nobody knows about it. So like it's it just it's super disappointing when that happens. Mm -hmm. Other than that, <clears throat> obviously played Cyber Hunter with James. What else did I do? We got a dub. <laughs> We did get a dub, and then we got fucking smacked out of nowhere. Oh, no, and first, I ripped the fuck off with that last goddamn match we played. I am not happy with that. <laughs> he fucking jumps down. I peg him in the face like three times, and the man isn't dead, and he's like, bop, bop, dead, bitch. And I'm like, I mind you, this was a game-winning kill. Like, I killed all of his teammates, and me and him were fucking battling for the throne. I mean, he killed me on some fuck shit. I am not happy with the way that turned out. And I am... I don't remember his name. But I... Y'all took care of, like, everyone else. But, like, the four people I killed in that match were the three motherfuckers that were on the All-Star list. I... Well, I... So, okay. So I took two of them out, one of their other... Another person, and then almost that fucker. Oh, my God. That pissed me off. Um... Yeah. Wow. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, Game sucks. That, I hate it. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. I like, kind of want to play after this. <laughs> um, but other than that, I technically did this last week, but I'm going to talk about it like I did it this week because why not? Well, tech, I mean, technically, I guess it was in the week span ago. Better patter. Okay, anyway. I ordered and am receiving the Galaxy Z Fold 2. I, I'm going to make the whole fucking thing about this when I actually get the phone. I plan on doing an unboxing, a whole review, and the reasons I have decided to move back to Android after having an iPhone since the 7 released. So that was, what, five years ago? Um, I'm going to go into a whole thing about it. It's There's a lot of reasons. There's also a lot of reasons I'm worried about moving, but, like, overall... My friends who know me, like, on the tech side, like, a lot of my family and a couple of my buddies that, like, I don't work at Best Buy, they were like, if you're going to do an Android, you made the right choice. You went as far as fucking possible in the opposite direction. And I, I got the most weird, out there, new thing that I possibly could. So that's going to be fun. I also have a Microsoft Surface Duo coming into the house real soon here that I'm going to be playing with, doing a review and an unboxing on that as well. And hopefully these two videos can kind of start this thing because I kind of want to start doing tech stuff because I can't find anything else. I don't have the patience to learn how to properly edit a bunch of fucking comic book strips or I would do comic shit. I probably am just going to do ramblings of that. But yeah, I have my my shit already for my videos and whatnot and i can probably like pay james or something to do editing or something at some point but we'll figure it out we'll see and i was just i i'm definitely going to do this tech thing though that seems like fun and i got two of the hottest devices on the market to do it with so that's that's neat but yeah other than that um i haven't done a whole lot else uh i got a new car mask for my car <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Fucking wow. Hell. Yeah, dude. Um, no, other than that, oh. not a whole lot. Nate, we played Rainbow Six for the first time in like... We did. We played, I played Siege again. I played Siege for the first time in like two months. So, uh, you want to talk about how this is probably like a big old tease for a new Splinter Cell? So... No, it's not. It's it's <laughs> not. They're it never means, making another... Really? They're never making... They're, if anything, they're probably going to remaster the old, the old ones. But I'm okay with that. they're never going to make a new, like a brand new Splinter Cell game. Why it's never going to happen because they don't care about that property anymore. But it's, it's not a, a great property. It is, but why do that when you can make games for ser games as a service, like Tom Clancy's Breakpoint, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, the other, uh, uh, the Division, Tom Clancy's The Division. Yeah, that game wasn't good. Um, yeah, 
That's fair. The Division 2. <laughs> the Division 2. Tom Clancy's great. Yeah, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah, I mean, like, and it it's completely different than what the traditional Ubisoft formula is nowadays of their single-player games. That is true. Like, is Far Cry 5, or the Far Cry series, and um, uh, Watch Dogs, and Assassin's Creed. They're all essentially interchangeable games. They all have the same bullshit gameplay loop. <laughs> Go here, unlock this, see more stuff in that area, collect all the MacGuffins. You can't really do that with um, with Splinter Cell. No, yeah, that's because Splinter Cell is, like, legitimately intense. Like, you got to be careful. See, like, that's the thing. Is that's uh, something I had mentioned. I was talking to Brandon, and I was busting his balls about the other night. Is I was like, you don't play stealth games, do you? He's like, no, I'm really fucking bad at them. And that, like, reminded me that, like, Splinter Cell was one of the few, like, genuinely good stealth games that kept you involved. Yeah, that and Metal Gear. Those are, like, when you look at, mm -hmm. like, stealth games, those are the two, like, pillars. Like, Metal Gear Solid 3 and... Funny enough, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, the third Splinter Cell game, are, like, the stealth games. The thing that I the thing that I kind of liked about Splinter Cell was, like, you couldn't really get out of the stealth, though. Like, you, te you could, but you were really supposed to do it as humanly possible as stealthy. But with Snake Eater, you could just run and gun if need be. Yeah, but then you're at that one point at the near the end of the game where you're walking through the swamp and you're there for a goddamn hour and a half because you just decided to <laughs> off every single person in the game at that point and they're just showing up as ghosts. So you're just walking through this marsh. Everything yeah, trying to kill you. Facts. That's wild. I I'm hoping we get something or I'm hoping like I don't know. I need another stealth game like that actually makes me want to be stealthy. Well, hey, apparently we, it wasn't that good. we have another um, we have another Ubisoft forward event coming this year. So that is true. Who knows? I'm excited for Legion. I want that game to fucking come out already. Yeah, me too. I've had that shit pre-ordered for a while for like when was it announced? Last year. I, no, I thought it was like two years ago when it was announced. Was it announced officially two years ago? I think so. I'd have to check my Amazon thing, but yeah, now I gotta... Well, see, I don't know. Because apparently, um, if you pop like the PlayStation 4 version of the game into a PlayStation 5, or the Xbox One version into the Series X, mm -hmm. you just get the upgraded version. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So now I'm like... Do I just buy the PS4 version and then just pop the disc in? I feel like that's how it should go. I mean, that's... Just, yeah, no, that's... In the perfect world, that's how it will go. We shall see, though. Um, other than that, for me... Uh, I'm kind of looking around and see if I did anything else that's, like, in front of me. No, nope, not a single thing. Um, yeah, that's all for me. All right, cool. So that sounds like some weeks. Let me give a big old shout out to Morgan and Jeffrey for uh, continuing their support, upping their lock picking skills. Thank you, Morgan and Jeffrey. Hey. All right. I have two more things that I forgot, actually. Jesus They're Christ. real quick. Okay, go. They're real quick. So I was, I've been watching two new animes that I really want to recommend. Uh, because I just continued watching them this week. I kind of forgot about it for a little bit. But Toradora and uh, The Great Impersonator, or The Great Imposter, I believe. They're both extremely good. Check them out. They're on Netflix. They're really great. Continue. Probably also on Crunchyroll. If you use code Level Unlock Podcast, you get absolutely nothing. I thought you, like, had a low-key shit. I was oh. like, What? That also reminds me, uh, this week I watched The Boys on Amazon Prime Video. How is they it? They released season two on September 4th, only on Amazon Prime Video. Please sponsor us. Uh, it's actually really good. That's what I hear. <laughs> I hear it's really good. 
It's uh, it's a like each episode's like an hour or an hour and a half or something. So like each one's kind of like cinematic, and there's a lot of violence and gore. So it's pretty intense. <laughs> See, Would recommend if you like action movies. It's I I have to be in the right mindset to watch to sit down and watch like an hour long episode of a show that isn't Hell's Kitchen. Because Hell's Kitchen, I... all a hundred percent, like every minute of Hell's Kitchen is entertaining because it's just Gordon Ramsay, like teetering on the point of having a stroke. Or you can watch like superheroes shoot down planes with their eyes. Yeah, because... but do do any of them call someone a fucking donkey? King donkey. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> the lambs raw, you fucking dick. The other one is a pretty good show, so I definitely recommend it. Especially if you like superhero stuff, it's pretty interesting in that aspect and has a lot of like undertones too. Hmm. So, oh, yeah. would recommend. It's been on my radar. I've been waiting for someone to uh to watch it to let me know how it is. Ramon fucking loves it. He's Does he? Super great. Yeah. Huh. He told he told he actually told me to watch it specifically. Like. Oh like, yeah, you'd I, love it. <laughs> I mean, I, my I'll thing is. I know that there's a specific person that's going to be getting a big guest star spot. He's going to be like a temporary character or a semi-permanent character. And because he was talking about he might show up on the boys and it's going to happen because he's too big of a star not to. You guys may may or may not know him, but Jensen Ackles, um, uh, his his 15 year long show is just now ending. They're just about to wrap up uh, production and put the last seven episodes out of Supernatural. But uh, he's in talks to be a character on The Boys, and that's what I'm kind of just waiting for. As soon as he's there, I'm going to binge all of it and get up to his part. If not, uh, I've watched the first episode, and all I know is that there's a lot of memes about Polnareff holding a pair of hands and saying, Avdo! And it's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get into some news. Um, let me talk about the, cause I think, do you, do you want to save the PlayStation five thing for last? Cause that was kind of like the huge thing from this week. Sure. All right. Let's save the PlayStation five thing for last. Hey, new games are coming to Nintendo switch online. Let's talk about them. This is a, hey. from Twitter, from Nintendo of America. So coming on the 23rd, uh, new games for the Super Nintendo for the Switch Online is Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest, Super, or Mario Super Picross, and The Peacekeeper. And the NES is getting SCAT, Special Cybernetic Attack Team. They really couldn't have picked a better name. Speaking of Nintendo, we had a fucking... God, Nintendo, you need to start letting us know, like, ahead of time when you're going to be doing these directs. Because I found about this Nintendo Direct Mini two days after it premiered. Um, oh, no, the day after. So, uh, first game they showed off was Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, it starts off with a little popper running around. It looks like Monster Hunter. Uh, you get to ride the popper. There's a Palco. Yes, it's definitely Monster Hunter. Uh, it's taken a lot of different things from World, like the uh, um, little bugs that track the monsters and having that little grappling hook thing. Uh, it's more Japanese-focused. Magnamalo is the big bad monster. It's coming out March 26th. Uh, the Doggo is called a Palamute. It's got four-player co-op, of course, and Amiibo support. They also announced Monster Hunter 2, uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. Uh, this one looks more Samoan inspired. Uh, near in like the Polynesian area. Uh, female character is friends with Arathalos. Main character is also a friend with Arathalos. Main character's name is Red. Main character sounds like Zelda from Breath of the Wild, or the main female character, I should say. Apparently, Rathalos are, uh, are they're disappearing. They're, they're leaving their natural habitat. So you got to find out why. And that's coming summer. Uh, and then they also had a Monster Hunter Direct that I didn't watch. More Nintendo Direct minis are coming later this year. Next thing is Fitness Boxing 2 Rhythm and Exercise. 
It's a boxing exercise game. Punch to the rhythm of the music. There's 66 courses, 23 songs, two-player mode, alarm function, turn off boxing moves. So you, you can just punch and set like hook and jab and all that kind of stuff. Uh, your save data from the first game will transfer over. Uh, there's nine different instructors, and that's coming out December 4th. Then they have Disgaea 6, De Defiance of Destiny. Uh, main character's name is Zed. Zed is a zombie. He becomes stronger the more he dies. Max damage is in the quadrillions. And the max level is 99,999,999. And that's coming out summer of next year. And that is going to be a Switch exclusive. And there's going to be a free trial for Disgaea 5 Complete from September 23rd to 29th. Next is Empire of Sin. It's a mafia-based action game by Romero Games. Pre-order now to get an exclusive mission and gangster. Sniper Elite 4 is also coming to the Nintendo Switch this holiday. All right, here we go. Long, lightning round. Uh, the Long Dark, which is out now. PGA Tour 2K21. Physical edition is coming out September 25th. And Hades is out now. We got more info on Balan Wonderworld, the new game from Square Enix. Uh, the main characters are Leo and Emma. There's 12 different stages. Different costumes can give you different abilities. There's over 80 costumes. You got to collect statues to progress. There's going to be a co-op mode, and that's coming out March 26th of next year. Rune Factory 5 was also announced. It's an action RPG with farming and fishing. And you can date other characters. You can do sick combo attacks, and that's coming out next year. And then finally... Ori and the Will of the Wisps is coming to the Switch, further solidifying the bond that Nintendo and Microsoft has created. Uh, it's out now, actually. And there's a collector's edition available for pre-order right now from I Am 8-Bit. And this kind of perfectly segues into the last bit of news that I have other than the, uh, other than the PlayStation stuff, to which all I can put is, wow, holy shit. So I wake up today to find out that Microsoft bought ZeniMax Studios. So now Yo. Microsoft owns Bethesda, id, Arcane, and more. So they own the rights, they own the license to Doom, Quake, Fallout, and the Elder Scrolls, as well as Pe Prey, The Evil Within, Wolfenstein, Dishonored, and Starfield. <laughs> this came out of fucking left field. Uh, they, yeah, so you got id Software, Doom and Quake, Arcane Studios, Dishonored and Prey, Tango Gameworks, The Evil Within, and Bethesda Game Studios, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout. Microsoft paid a whopping $7.5 billion, billion with a B, to acquire these game, this company. They could have gotten more. Uh, which a lot. It's expected to <laughs> complete... Yeah, just seven point five billion. Um, apparently, according to this Engadget article, um, the company was valued in twenty sixteen for around two point five billion. Two point five billion. And apparently, and apparently, Sony was eyeing them up at one point too. Um, but yeah, that's pff, someone got a nice payday. Yeah. Uh, good old Todd Howard. Good old Todd Howard. Um, yeah, so apparently the deal is set to come at the second half of next year. And Microsoft has said that they don't plan on changing anything when it comes to any of the games. Like, um, what is it? Uh, Nate, what's that game you're super excited for for PlayStation 5? That's a PS5 exclusive. Um. Yeah. Yeah, Deathloop. So that's by one of the companies that was purchased in this. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Microsoft has no intention of changing any plans with that. So it's it's going to stay a PlayStation 5 exclusive for now. Nice. Yeah. Hey, wow. Oh, also, yeah. Tango Game where uh, yeah, Ghostwire Tokyo, Deathloop. Um, I'm still excited for that game. Yeah. So that's fucking nuts. Which also means that uh, Bethesda games are probably going to be coming to Game Pass as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
from Game Pass, I'm happy. There's already, there's already a bunch of them on there. Oh like yeah, Fallout 76 is already on there. Is that really a game though? I yeah. mean, it makes them money. Uh, yeah. They're still, they're still working on it. Games as a service. Yeah, true. I um, I, I paid sixty. I paid five. <laughs> um, yeah. So hey, Microsoft, they're really uh, they're really going for it. They're really trying to nab up everyone. Now, fans on the internet are screaming at Sony. Buy some companies, you fucks. Why would they need to? Why does Microsoft need to? Because Microsoft, from what I can tell, Microsoft was told by Bungie again, no, we're not doing anything for you again. And because they try to buy them every single year. Like, yeah. They've consistently tried to buy Bungie, and he's like, no. So he's then fucking Microsoft's like, fine, we'll just buy everyone else till you're the only one left. Then you have to sell. So, I mean, that kind of makes me think, though, that is this going to light a fire under Sony's butt to uh, to buy, buy Konami finally? I mean, so a quick little thing we can do. Um, who do you think is the most likely for Sony to actually purchase? Konami. You think that's the most likely? That's the most likely. Yeah. Who do you think? That, okay. Who is like the one they absolutely should purchase? Konami. Because so the a lot of their to, yeah, they should are one the same. Yeah, the a lot of the games that they make are synonymous, especially like their later games are synonymous with PlayStation, like Silent Hill and Metal Gear. And also, it's like Ubisoft. No, nah, Ubisoft's too big. But Bethesda. Yeah, Ubisoft's think... still too big. Really? Isn't Konami pretty huge too? Like, don't they have like a pretty large like physical arcade presence as well? Still? They do. They probably would do a deal where it's like they sell the game studio part because they're not doing shit. Yeah. They're not doing anything. Um, yeah, other than last... some published Konami games. Actually, did Metal Gear Survive? Like... Oh, and that wasn't good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it would also be perfect. I mean, because then, even though he doesn't really want to do it, mm -hmm. it would kind of reunite Kojima with the Metal Gear That's series. True. That's true. Oh, wait. We could get some good games. Well, he, he says that he doesn't want to make another Metal Gear. He's done with with the Metal Gear story. After 5, he was done. So Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, at least on like an advisory role. Because I That'd guarantee be cool. if... If there was, like, a smaller company that Sony would buy, it would be Koji Pro. It would be Kojima Productions. They basically already own it. After how much money they're invest they invested in Death Stranding and how much they're probably investing in his next, uh, his next venture because of how successful Death Stranding was. Nice. Definitely. I don't... Probably, I mean, yeah, probably. Yes, yeah, so that's that's yeah, it. The, yeah. That's it that I have, and also, I mean, like Sony already owns a good amount of companies. I mean, but like their last major, their last like acquisition was Insomniac Games a few years ago, which was one of those things where it was like, huh, really? They don't own that company. <laughs> I remember when that that deal went through, and I just go, wait, <laughs> Sony never owned Insomniac, <laughs> and then I remembered that Sunset Overdrive was a thing, and I was like, oh yeah, they did that make one. Honestly, kind of lit. They did make one game for a non Sony platform, and they were also looking at buying Remedy, I do believe, uh, the company behind Alan Wake and stuff. Alan Wake Control. I know they were very close to a deal. I don't know if it ever went through. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's that I have for news until PlayStation. Who wants to go next? Mine's pretty quick. Uh, Mark, you can go. You actually got something with substance. Um, it's nothing too crazy. 
so it looks like this week uh, there were two CFTs players that became a pirate legend in two days without being sunk. I saw that. That's crazy. They were, ab- they were able to get to level 50 in all three of the uh, organizations in under 22 hours. Um, That's nuts. It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. They have it in two parts. Uh, I'm just trying to see what their YouTube channel is real quick. Uh, yeah, their YouTube channel is Disabled Chicken, but... Disabled <laughs> Chicken? <laughs> yeah. So they have the, the two-part, like, world record run. Uh, so you can watch that if you're interested. It's pretty wild. <laughs> uh, next thing up that I got, looks like Rocket League's going to be coming free-to-play on September 23rd on Xbox One. Uh, they also did a shit ton of changes to the game as well, which I haven't played in a little bit, so I'm probably not the best to talk about. Uh, about it um nate probably knows a little bit more but i know that they did a handful of changes and they'll probably be doing more soon i imagine so i mean so it's not too much to be completely honest but like i mean i guess i would say it is a fair amount because they kind of overhauled every single menu of the game everything looks different not a single thing looks the same I think it's kind of, it's kind of clunky now. It doesn't feel as streamlined, as clean. It's also black and red instead of just like the neon blue that was synonymous with loading up Rocket League and seeing all. Of... It could be purple. I'm fucking colorblind. I don't know exactly what color it was, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just preemptively striking before anyone t- cuts me down. Um, uh, but no, like every menu just feels ugly, clunky, and like. Obviously, it's not actually slow, but it feels, it doesn't feel as quick. Like, nothing feels as snappy, I guess. I don't know. It's like the way the animations were. I guess it it, it feels like you're going, like, you have to do a little bit more steps to do what you need to do, what was available, like, right off the bat. Like, when you're going to play a game, there was that, the box with the, the rows of what you picked. And most of the time, it would auto-set on what you already have. And if you wanted to change it, you click cancel. And then you would pick what you want and you go back over. Uh, at least from what I've seen so far, that like auto-set kind of isn't there. So you got to just click and continuously get what you want. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't feel as smooth as streamlined. It doesn't feel as slick. I it just I don't like it. I also am like, I'm not the biggest Rocket League fan. Like, it's fun every now and then, but, like, I don't know. It kind of takes – it feels like it's more effort to play now, and it's kind of annoying. But, yeah, that's, that's – understand. Did they also get rid of, like, Rocket ID? Isn't it now just linked yeah, up to your Epic? It's, it com- they completely wiped all of Psionics pretty much off of that thing, and it's just your Epic stuff. Like, I think that's kind of fucked because, like, I get they bought the company, but let them have something – and the Epic was like, nah, we're yeah. just gonna wipe you, you off know the what they, You game. know what they had? A good fucking payday. I mean, probably, but like, I don't know. The game, I, I always felt like, oh, this is Psyonix's game. Now it feels like, oh, great, this is Epic's game. What are they gonna do to it? They're gonna put BTS in it. Like they did with Fortnite. Fortnite. Where the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the Rocket League update. Word. Yeah. I, I'll plan on playing it this week, so whenever I do, I'll be sure to give you some more updated information a little bit later down the line. Uh, next thing up that I got, it looks like uh, good old PS5 will not be getting a Game Pass style subscription service. Um, says the PlayStation boss, Jim Ryan, as he told uh, Gim- GamesIndustry.biz in a new interview. So he says, uh, we want to make games bigger and better and hopefully at some stage more persistent. So putting those into some side, some uh, subscription model on one day uh, for us just doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, for others in different situations, it might well make sense, but for us it doesn't. We want to expand and grow our existing ecosystem and putting new games into a subscription model just doesn't sit with that. So yeah, no Game Pass style thing for Sony games. It's, it's it's dumb. dumb. It's a dumb one yeah. move. Agreed. Like, fucking Microsoft has this shit on point. Mm-hmm. They they are. I mean, now the possibilities are endless. With with especially now that they own 
all the Zenimax stuff. Like the possibilities would, for games are endless. Figured they would integrate some kind of uh, what's it, like that kind of service with like their PlayStation. What was it now, now. or Go? Now? Yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, now. I, fig- I figured they would integrate that sort of thing with it. Like it would just be so much better. It'd be like, hey, pay this monthly price and you have a shit ton of games and a place to play it. Yeah, yeah. It would. Like, it would. I mean, fuck. <clears throat> Like they they need to get out of the their they need to get out of their whole Japanese Japanese style of business where it's like no this is my stuff we're not gonna do anything like what these other people are doing we're gonna we're just gonna put our digger heels in the sand and just stand our ground no you you need to evolve with with everything we get it. You know, you guys fucking dominated every single, like, PlayStation has outsold Xbox in every single generation that did comparatively. Like, the last three, last four generations now, since PlayStation has been a thing, it has always been the highest selling system of that generation. True. Well, other than other than I guess the Wii, but still, out out comparing like Microsoft and Sony, Sony has always won. But now, I mean, fuck, I can get all these games for Xbox, all by paying just you know, what a hundred bucks a year. Well, like what a fucking point, deal. Do it on your PC, or yeah, or on your PC. Well, I'm I'm thinking more of like the people who who are sole console gamers. Okay. I mean, honestly, legit, hundred percent. Game Pass is a system seller. Whether it's on, like, buying a Xbox to play Game Pass, or buying a computer that hey happens to have Windows on it. That Microsoft takes a cut of, or that these companies have to pay Microsoft to put mo- uh, Windows on their uh, on their stuff. Hey, either way, it's it's a system seller. Game Pass was the smartest thing Microsoft has ever done. I mean, yeah, I can see that. I just, I don't think that's Sony's bread and butter, like. Sony's never been a, hey, let's get a bunch of games and have a bunch of people be able to play multiplayer. Because, like, the mass majority of games that are on Game Pass, like, yeah, there's quite a few story games. But, like, a lot of them, they're, they're mainly there for the multiplayer. Aspect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and like, Sony's Sony, always been, they've always yeah. been the, the story-driven company. Like, they, mm-hmm. they, they use their resources throughout the industry. Yeah. Like, I don't think that a ton of, so uh, let's be real. The games themselves are fucking beautiful, but a lot of them don't have a fuck ton of replay value. So putting those on as a service wouldn't make much sense. Because as soon as they beat the games that are on the service, because the handful of games that are, like, remarkably good, that are just fucking showstoppers, they'll get through them. And eventually, it's not, it's not, there's no, I guess there's no reconsist, like, not reconsistency, but, like, there's not enough reason to keep paying after a certain point. Now, At that point, you could go buy the few games you truly, really want to get down and dirty with and save yourself a ton of money. But... As to where Xbox is just like, hey, multiplayer, go, go, go. Sorry. But, but no, here, here, here's my rebuttal to that. Okay. Sony has such a, a good relationship with a ton of companies. I mean, they can add... It doesn't, like, like with... Game Pass. I mean, you get your Game Pass, you get your Game Pass subscription, you're not getting just Nintendo, or not Nintendo, fuck, not just Microsoft <laughs> games. You're not getting, you know, only Halo and only Gears of War and only the, you know, Blinks the fucking cat or whatever. You're not getting those games. You're getting those games plus, you know, all these indie games, all these other AAA games, you know. You're getting a ton of stuff from all over so i think sony could 
really push to, hey, Konami, we haven't bought you yet. Here's some money. Why don't you throw, if you ever decide to make a game again, throw, throw Pro Evolution Soccer on our streaming service. Or, hey, Activision, you're not doing anything with, or well, uh, when, hey, your fucking uh, Call of Duty's a little old. Why don't you throw it on our streaming service? Yeah, that's true. They oh, have no, a like... great relationship with companies like Sega. Yeah. So, Persona 6. Hey, so, like, here's money. Put it on our streaming service. For a lot of the games that are already on the Microsoft streaming service, if they were like, hey, we have ends with these companies too. Let's put them on ours. And when they just like, oh, well, they can't have these titles because we have these titles. And that seemed like that would maybe cause issues. Or would I it not? I feel like... I feel like it could. Um, if... Enough games that aren't on if, Xbox to put on there? I feel like it, that could be an issue if... If it was the other way around. If there was a game that was on... If Sony had a streaming service and okay. Microsoft was like, yeah, we want to put that on our streaming service too. But... So like, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I feel like right now in the world that we live in, in the year of our Lord 2020, Microsoft would be like, fuck yeah, let's put it on the Sony thing too. Let's have more people play this. I'm just waiting for the day... Where where um, uh, Phil Spencer walks out at like a press conference and goes, "Halo is on everything." That would be lovely. Halo Halo sixty nine is coming to PlayStation eight, <laughs> and everyone just their draws just drop to the floor. Or you know when when they come out when he comes out and goes, "Yeah, Xbox Game Pass, it's on." Or yeah, Game Pass. It's on PlayStation now. I'm just waiting for that day because that seems to be the company that Microsoft, that Xbox is. Now, they're just the cool kids. They are the wholesome people that we need in this in the world right now. I don't know. Have you seen the shit on Twitter? The Microsoft yeah. account on Twitter or the Xbox account on Twitter? People have been like after the PlayStation 5 was announced, uh people were tweeting like yeah, I was going to get an Xbox, but all my friends are getting PlayStation 5s and you know, it just it just kind of sucks. And then without even tagging Xbox, an Xbox would just chime in and be like, "Hey man, that's cool. You play with your friends, man. Get a PlayStation 5. You're going to have a great time." Someone... And then maybe later on down the line, you can get an Xbox or you can get a gaming PC and get Game Pass so you can have the best of both worlds. And I go, this is the kind of wholesomeness we need in 2020. This is not the same PR company, they, the, the, the PR people they had like three years no, ago. No, hell no. Not even a little bit. Hell they, no. <laughs> they got fucking the Mr. Rogers of gaming and PR. Hey, man, it's cool. Play in your neighborhood. Just... Maybe, maybe come visit mine whenever you want. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, I feel like... That's fucking weird. I'm just... <laughs> I'm PR just... Like that. I'm just waiting for next year for, like, them to drop some crazy... Well, hell, even, um... Even when they announced, um... Uh... xCloud. One, xCloud's available with your Game Pass Ultimate subscription free, which, holy shit, that was rad to hear about. But two... Mm -hmm. When the uh, lead architect or the person like heading the project, when she was interviewed at Xbox's um, like XO London last year, and she was saying like, yeah, you know, you can hook it up and you can use like these third party controllers or an Xbox controller or maybe a DualShock 4. <laughs> and everyone just goes, holy uh -huh. shit, what? <laughs> They just they they just want Microsoft just wants everyone to be happy. Microsoft is the good guy. I can't accept it. It feels weird to say, but I can't accept it. Microsoft Microsoft is like it's they're 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 the the good boys.
Fox. They're the good boys. Poppycock. I think it's a ruse. It's a clever ruse. Uh, it's a ruse to buy out every company and own Monopoly. Yeah, they're just being they're being like hyper nice to get everyone to be like, oh, look what's at your them. ulterior and they're motive? They're going to monopolize everyone. What's the ulterior motive here? Yeah, you're not you just nice, just... Uh, <laughs> right? They're probably going to raise the, the price of it in the next few years, or next year at least. That's, you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm really fine with that. I feel like spending what is it like 15 bucks a month for game pass ultimate i feel like i'm ripping them off See, with all the shit that i get that's where i disagree so my thing is i i get the 15 bucks a month i get you get a bunch of stuff whatever they should 100 percent give you an option to pay like a total of 20 dollars less than you would a year and let me buy a fucking year yeah oh, yeah yeah, no, it sucks that you can only do, like, what? I hate monthly payments. I truly do. What is it, like, three in one month? One in three months? Yeah, that's... Yeah. You can buy one to three months. And I think there was... Uh, every now and then, there'll be a six-month where that pops up. Yeah. But that's or, it. Like, or they'll do that, that fucking cool Chad move where it's, like, buy three months of Game Pass and get three months free. Right. They drop that, like, twice a year. Let me buy a year. If they can do everything else, it shouldn't be too hard to tally it up for a year. Cut $20 off. Let me buy the bundle. It's not going to lose them any money. They'll still lose money. It's difficult to It'll keep... be dollars, though, like comparatively. It, no, yeah, but you're also thinking about how many people use the service at one time. So, like, yeah, it might just be one person that that's... You know they're losing ten bucks on, but let's say it's a hundred thousand people that they're losing uh, ten bucks on. Then they're losing a million total because they did this one tiny change. Mm -hmm. um, but how much money would that still make them? They're, they're, I feel well, like... the thing is that they're probably losing money selling it in yearly packages because it's a lot more difficult to keep. The like you're limiting the amount of time that the your current subscribers are using your service. So instead of, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was just gonna use something that I'm actually like, familiar with. Like, obviously, Best Buy. I work with the Ring and the Arlo subscriptions a ton, and it's more beneficial for the consumer. And in the long run, at least for these companies, like Amazon, who obviously owns Ring and Netgear, whoever the fuck owns Netgear that owns Arlo, like they'll do three dollars a month or thirty a year. Or ten dollars a month, or a hundred a year. It saves you ten, 20, 10, 10 bucks, twenty bucks here and there. And then Arlo's is like one thirty a year, or like fourteen bucks a month. So like, I just I feel like there's a way to do it properly and not lose money. Like fuck, save me five bucks and I'm happy. Like, it just I don't know. I feel like there's a way to bundle it and make it make sense and make it still beneficial. They did it a while with Xbox Live. It was like 60 mm. bucks for a year for ever. Yeah. And then whenever they introduced these new services, that's whenever it changed. Yeah. And you so, can still do the 60 bucks for a year for just normal uh, gold, as far as I know. So they just probably value their services a bit more. And I don't know. I, again, I think it's just a lot easier to keep your customers like pretty much paying over and over again whenever you just say it's a monthly subscription and, versus yeah, it, buying like a year card and it's kind of like the whole netflix thing where they kind of hope that you forget that you're paying for it so you don't use it so you're literally just giving them money <laughs> there's a lot of business stuff with you're it you're acting kind of sus now every company does it in their own kind of way yeah they're all acting kind of sus i think they need to be voted off <laughs> they're the imposter they're the imposter. No, I, I get it. I, like, from a business, like, totally from a business standpoint, I understand. But, like, it's the certain, there's very small, minute things like that where, like, they definitely could do it. And realistically, like, sure, they'd lose X amount of dollars. But, like, in the grand scheme of things, they're still making tons of money regardless. And, and I don't know, it's just small enough to the point where, like, it bugs me. I'll probably still do it. But it's just annoying that the option isn't there. Because mm -hmm. there are certain people who don't want to pay up front. 
So like half the time that'll never go away. It's they're like, oh, three three dollars. Like so, I'm luckily I'm talking about like ring and whatnot. But like three dollars a month. Oh, that's easy. That's fine. That's that's nothing. And like I agree, but you pay thirty a year, you save some money, and they're still making a ton of money. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I mean, there's not much more to talk about with that, but I think it's a possibility. Yeah. So Sony's not going to do a streaming service. No. TLDR. Yeah. yeah. TLDR. Um, next thing I got. Uh, Looks like uh, NVIDIA was having some problems with their new 3080 Founders Edition launch on their website. Oh, they um, had a bit of a problem. Yeah, so uh, everyone on the internet is pretty much just saying that their uh, shop on their site changed from Notify Me to Out of Stock at 6 p.m. Pacific uh, exactly. So it was never actually available to buy for some consumers or any consumers on their website. So, yeah, they're under a little bit of hot water. Yeah, but don't uh, worry. They, they they said that we'll have thousands available in the coming weeks. Sure, yeah. Yeah, only uh, thousands. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then I think AMD is also releasing a new GPU sometime soon. So I would assume they're going to be putting a bunch of resources yeah, into that. Yeah, that shit was weird. Did you hear about that, how they announced their new 6000 series? GPUs? Um, I think so. I don't exactly remember it. They announced it in Fortnite. Oh, yeah. They uh, they put the model there. Yeah, they, they announced it and released it in Fortnite. They're like 6,900 or something like that. Or 6,800. With the big Navi 2. Yeah, I... Still, we don't really know too much information about it, unfortunately. Mm -mm. They're going to have to be releasing that soon. Yeah, and they've built so much hype around it, so hopefully it doesn't suck. It's finally going to be a GPU that's comparable to... They're, pro they're going to finally make a flagship GPU. Allegedly. Yeah, I mean, they're... Eh, I was going to say, like, they're... Uh, like, I had a, a a GT, I want to say 580, which wasn't too bad. Yeah. But, I mean, um, like, and... I have their, their, other than, like, the Radeon 7, um, their 5700 XT is supposed to be their response to, like, the 20, like, the 2080. But it's nowhere near that. <laughs> it's, like... A 2070. While their Radeon 7 is supposed to be like their comparison to the Titan. Supposed to be. Yeah, so I don't know. let you know if I hear anything more about uh, video cards. I know if you're interested in finding one, uh, you can still find non Founders Edition ones on eBay for like around 900 bucks. So they're not too crazy. At least the last time that I checked. It's not bad. Um, yeah, so there, there there are ones on there that are super expensive, especially the Founder Edition cards that have the, the fancy fans and shit. Um, now, do the Founders Edition, it's like, is there anything special other than the look of them? Not really. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, a, a lot of times people don't even actually buy those kind of cards just because, like, other other companies will tend to do their own, like, kind of overclocking with them. So they'll like to get like third party cards or or have know, better Gigabyte or Asus cards or whatever. Better better fucking heating or cooling. Cuz usually yeah. I know didn't um I know at least like the 1080 founders had the fucking single fan blower model. Yeah, it which, was terrible. Yeah. Even the uh even the 2080 model, it was solid metal. So yeah, like, it's not it it worked. It's just not very good. Got hot. Kind of needed. Yeah, it gets toasty. Um, I don't know how these third-party coolers really work. I haven't seen too much information about them, but I'll probably look into it sometime soon. Uh, next thing up that I got looks like LG is uh, an announced their new new phone called the LG Wing that uses oh, yeah. two two screens Whoa, that weird. that swivels upwards, so it's like a T shape. Yeah, it it's like a T shape. So one screen is completely landscape or the other one's like portrait 
Um, it uses a Snapdragon 765G, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of memory, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, quick charging, wireless charging, uh, 64 megapixel camera, nice T-pose guys, uh, Bluetooth 5.1, and Android 10. It looks uh, pretty cool. Uh, excuse me, sir, we are LG wing posing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've actually watched quite a few reviews on that guy, and... It's an average phone. I'm not going to lie. Like, all the internal specs are yeah. pretty okay. Like, it's pretty mid-range. I would assume it's pretty expensive for what it is since it's, like, the first iteration I of this. I want to say it's... I think it's a grand, so it's not, like, ridiculous. That's not too bad. Um, but the problem is, is that, like, the secondary... The secondary screen, the one that's only a half screen... Yeah, it's not that nice. It's... But it's, I believe it's... Uh, Pixel per inch is pretty low. It's not a very high quality screen. I think it might be OLED. I'm not 100% sure. It's probably AMOLED. Yeah, the, the main display is a 6.8 inch FHD plus P OLED full vision display. And the secondary, the small one, is a 3.9 inch G OLED display. Um, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, I have no idea either. But yeah, they're OLEDs. Okay. Um, Probably both fake seem to be doing the, Yeah, they both seem to be doing the same resolution, though, as okay. far as I can tell. I don't know. Uh, so Lou and this one guy, Tech Odyssey, both messed around with it. Lou from Unbox Therapy. It just... It's a cool idea, kind of, but... That's why I brought it up. It's more of know, a it's technology piece. It's, oh, it's, absolutely. I totally agree, and I'm glad you did talk about it, because, like, honestly, I forgot that phone existed. It's a boutique until, like, phone. Like but just... the problem is, is that people are putting it in the same, like, ingenuity class as, like, a fold, but it's not the same prospect. Different purposes, yeah. Like, I, I honestly don't know what I would use this kind of phone for, right. but I think oh, yeah. it would be actually really cool to, like, I don't know, play even just, it. like, text, like text on it, it or watch yeah. videos. Like, you just open it up and you have a, a full screen as well as, like, a bottom display to, I don't know, do something on or type on. Like, it's... My, yeah. My favorite, uh, my favorite iteration of what it can do, um, and this honestly isn't much, but it was on a stand in a car, and it had the whole Spotify thing on the 3.8 inch or whatever that was, and then Google Maps on the like the downwards T pose, and I thought that was really neat because like, it's not that they're just next to each other; they feel like one thing, but the two separate things, which is pretty nice, and like there's like a differential about it. Like it's, it's an interesting design. It's a bold fucking move, though. Like, it's definitely something that very few people, and it, this is, I think this is more niche than, like, a Fold, because a Fold is a mini tablet that folds. Yeah. Oh, I have a feeling, well, I know that LG tends to do these kind of weird, like, kind of designs with their, mm -hmm. their phones. Like, they <laughs> tend to have, like, kind of mainstream effects, but, like, there's, like, one thing about it that really just kind of throws it all off. It's LG, the same thing. their phones remind me of, like, the early 2000 like phones like the chocolate or mm -hmm. the one that like the switchblade one that just swung outward that had like, like an MP no the th super thin one that would that was like mainly an mp3 player then it would like oh. it would just snap up and it would be like a full like keyboard or not full keyboard mm -hmm. but like a dial pad or like the sidekick oh, i know what you're talking about or the end gauge like Back when phones were yeah. fun and interesting <laughs> looking and everyone Fucking... was just throwing things at the wall to see what stuck. The mm -hmm. LG Voyager has a yeah. touch screen the with Voyager a full keyboard. Tight. Like fucking wild. Like so it's it's the same thing. LG does these niche things that are like super specific. And they're also trying to do the whole folding phone game. But not actually a folding phone. They're making these cases with second displays that mirror the first display, like the LG Velvet and the LG G8 ThinQ that has the, the foldable case option. It's basically just an entire secondary display, a mirror image of the first one. The problem with those, and like I was actually watching one earlier, someone was doing a comparison between the Duo and the LG Velvet inside of its case, because it's honestly... The way they're doing it isn't bad. 
purely for the fact that it's five ninety nine for the phone and two hundred bucks for the case, you're still coming out cheaper. My issue with the phones is they look clunky as shit. The hinge mechanism offsets it, so one's slightly higher than the other, so it's kind of done like that. And it just it doesn't feel clean. It doesn't feel refined. And I feel like, obviously, though, this is their second version of that. Their LG G8 Thin Q with the secondary screen was the first one. The Velvet's their second. They'll probably do better, but I'm just... I don't know. They, 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 they feel like they try the, the cheapest way out, but that's also to be respected because they're trying to find ways to compete. But LG has also kind of been floundering for the past couple of years. But they're, I mean, they're making waves. They're making people notice them again, so that's what's positive. I got to play around with the G8, and that didn't have any issues. I didn't notice any like issues with the displays. No, the displays are fine. My issue is that the case itself or, is offset. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't notice it when yeah, I played around with it. Table, it's so like if you're holding it like a book, it, you're not going to. But like if you lay it fl- as flat as possible, you'll see that it's just a hair above it. Uh, okay. Least, so I have a, I have OCD. So that's that's the kind of thing that bothers me. It's probably not a big problem for most people, but like that's a con on my end at least. Uh, I know it's a big thing with the. Uh, the velvet, but the velvet does look it is cheaper than the G8, so that might be another th- another reason as well. LG back at it, crazy phones. Who would have knew? <laughs> uh, next up that I got, it looks like uh, this one's a bit random, but I also thought it was interesting. Uh, Taco Bell uh, announced a potential or a new product that they're implementing in a few stores in Canada called their Jalapeno Noir wine that pairs. Uh, very, very good with a uh, cheddar wait, chalupa. From wait, Taco Bell. hold, wait, I'm run that. Hold on, it. wait, Let's whoa, go. whoa, whoa, run that back a little bit. <laughs> what did you say? Jalapeno, like <laughs> noir. <Cheddar> yeah, <laughs> that sounds what? lit. That sounds disgusting. I'm with it, bro. I yeah, mean, I'll co- try it, but God, that sounds right. terrible. Yeah, it, it complements a, a the toasted cheesy cheddar chalupa chow show really well apparently when's the when's oh, the uh report of the nice week's <laughs> video on that oh i can't wait to see that yeah i mean if they if they announce it like company why that'd be pretty cool but you, i want to know <laughs> a lot of people on the internet kind of had the same response they're like that's absolutely fucking disgusting you want to know who i guarantee will check it out me cool food reviews he's that oh dude. yeah <laughs> Doing the reviews on the YouTube. On the YouTube. <laughs> yes. I, I I gotta remember I don't remember his name, but I'm sure he'll fucking try it. Yeah. Oh my. That's wild though. Like fucking Taco Bell's with the fucking left the out of what's, left field shit. I'm with it. What's next? Like do Burger King though. Burger King doing like a smoked meat wine? Like Burger King rum. Smoked yeah. spiced rum. Yeah. BK rum. <laughs> You want the taste of a Whopper and to get you drunk? Yeah, and they start selling, like, margaritas and shit. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, last thing that I got looks like uh, an update on the most expensive PS5 on eBay is around 50000 U.S. dollars right now. Holy in case you were curious. Uh, that, back to you guys, the newsroom. Oh, to kind of toss into, like, that whole concept... The 3090, the first day it got sold out, there was one on uh, eBay for eighty thousand dollars. Someone was trying to sell it for eighty grand, and I was like, "You're fucking high." I do. You mean, a 3080. 3080. There's the 3090, isn't there? That's not. There is, but it's not like pre-sale yet. Oh, no, oh yeah. yeah, the no, most yeah. Ex- most expensive fucking uh, RTX 3080 that I'm seeing right now is uh, ninety thousand three hundred dollars. Fuck. Yeah, it's nuts. People are actually fucking high. Like, there's no way this guy's legitimately thinking he can get that. My problem is the people who will pay for that. <laughs> yeah. He's fucking. He learned a lesson from Grant Cardone himself. 10x that shit. Take no less. 10x it. It's nuts. Oh my. I mean, the only news that I really have is that. Uh, why can't I think of the fucking name now? 
I was going to start it with something like kind of abstract and go into it, but BlackBerry is coming fucking back in 2021. Wow. I just watched it. I watched an interview with, um, I'm really forgetting the dude's name. The CEO of, uh, Onward Mobile. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name, but he, he was uh, doing a review with Tech Odyssey. And it, 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 from what they've talked about, because they were very, very, sh- like, they were super stringent on what they were talking about. Like, they weren't really giving any information it's away. Very hush hush. Yeah, like, it was super, super secret. But these boys are making some bold claims. We're going to talk about those claims. So, the man who I really want to refer to by name, but I'll, I'll do eventually. Blackberry is, Man. Uh, yeah, the BlackBerry man. He is claiming that you are going to want this to be your main device. It is entirely meant. Peter Franklin, Onward Mobile. So good old Petey Franklin decides he's going to start repping and talking about this is going to be the main device. This is going to be your daily efficiency, power user, like the device to have if we want it to be your primary use and to be able to take it home uh, take it from your home all day be able to use it work leisure efficiency be- great battery life entertainment system he's he's claiming it's going to be the fucking big thing and I just don't think Onward Mobile or BlackBerry themselves know what the f- fuck a smartphone in, I'd say, 2017 is, let alone 2021. Because they keep trying to make iterations of the key, and it's not working. The key, too, was a massive fail. The, uh, I want to say, they just made another one. I think it was the Risen, and that didn't sell at all. Did anyone know they made a phone for 2019 no. and 2020? No. No, the fuck that anyone did because it didn't go anywhere. Like, they keep trying to make these phones. And, like, this is the first time they're actually promoting something. They're coming into the light, which is why I'm saying they're back because the Onward Mobile is taking over again. And BlackBerry was, uh, they're both part of the same company, but they were kind of doing their own thing. And they're like, nah, we're going to become one again. And. They're really claiming this is going to be, like, the killer. Like, it's going to be as efficient as an iPhone and as sleek as an iPhone, but with the fun and functionality of uh, a Samsung. And, like, or an Android in general. Pick whatever Android you want, insert here. And I just don't think they're capable. Because they already tried to do an iPhone back with the BlackBerry Z in 2014, right when the the iPhone 5 was out. There was the BlackBerry Z, and I was fucking obsessed with that phone because I had a Google Galaxy Nexus at the time, which I still love the Nexus line, one of the best lines on phones ever created. Um, but they failed at that. That didn't sell well because they still tried to use their own OS. I think that's going to be what what's going to decide if it's going to actually like function or not. Like If the phone's going to do well, they have to use Android. Skin it however you want. But they cannot try to use their BlackBerry OS or whatever they call it because well, didn't every the, single phone has failed. The last few ones have been Android. The key to... The key to was Android. But the problem was it was integrated with BlackBerry software to make sure uh, the keyboard works all perfectly. Like, it wasn't pure Android. Okay. Imagine, imagine one like, UI overhauled. It's like... Again. Um, Kindle, Kindle's the Fire OS, yeah, where it exactly. is, it's, it is technically so, built on Android, but it is a different yeah, OS. And it's not even a skin; like it's legitimately like its its mainframe is Android, yes. And then they just do whatever they want with it. And it's like, so for like the bigger techie people, it's not even close to like the concept of Harmony OS, which is what Huawei is actually launching. Also, I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but they finally stated this is our new OS and all of their phones will purely run Harmony OS now. No forms of Android. They're done with Android entirely. Um, but yeah, that's neat. That's a different story, though. That's, that's all there really is to it. 
But yeah, I'm hoping they learn from their mistakes. But we'll see. And hopefully they make headlines because I want to talk about them again. Because if they don't, I will forget about you, Blackberry. I promise I will forget about you. And so will <laughs> everybody else. Like we did the past two years. The last time I remember Blackberry, I was still AP. And someone really needed a key to because it was like their favorite thing. And I'm like, I, I don't know. God, that, that was fucking forever ago. Holy that was shit. Too... <laughs> But yeah, guys, that's that's all I really got. I only really had some mobile news. I kind of talked about my stuff earlier. Um, I've been watching a ton, and I've actually been playing a lot with uh, the Z Fold 2. So one thing I do want to touch on that I'll touch into much more deeply in the video that I ended up making, but if you're willing to pay this much for a phone, this is where you start. Or... You go on eBay, you find a Galaxy Fold 1 for like 800 bucks because that's what they're selling for right now. But if you want a foldable device, you start with the new 2020 Razer Flip, uh, the new Razer uh, 5G version because it doesn't have the issues. They kind of fixed the screen issues. That's if you want to go like the cheaper route because they're, they cut the price down. Or the Z Flip 5G, which is phenomenal. Um or if you want something really, really interesting, go with the Z Fold 2. I'll give you my entire full thoughts after. I'm going to do pretty much a day-to-day, -day, like, how I'm feeling about it, what I think. Um, but yeah, that's going to be more to come. I'll talk about it at that at the end. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have. A little bit of information about some devices, and that's, that's all I got other than we st uh, we're pr everyone's pretty much put... Uh, 120 hertz for an iPhone to bed. It's not happening this year. It's simply not going to happen. It was in uh, pre uh, pre production models uh, as a setting. However, it's looking like they're going to push that back until 2021, purely for the fact that they can't source enough of the panels because Samsung apparently doesn't want to give them enough of a variable refresh rate panels because they only had to do it for a couple hundred thousand with like the notes and they can't produce a couple, you know, like million. 30, 40 million of them, which is understandable, but does suck because the notes are a niche thing, obviously with them being the, the no holds barred Samsung device. And there's only a few people buy those a few people in the grand scheme of things, I suppose, but with it being an iPhone, they are just not going to do it this year. And the other big reason they're not doing it is because they couldn't get, I want to say it's BDO to do their screens, just purely for the fact that they weren't up to, uh, they didn't pass uh, quality control. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Uh, that's back to you guys. All right, let's get on to the, the, big, the big thing, the meat and potatoes. Uh, I know, Nate, you watched it with me. I did. Mark, did you read up anything or watch the PlayStation 5 showcase, the latest one? No. All righty. So, it starts off with a fucking banger. Yeah, it does. It says, on a black, a black screen with white text, it says, shown on PC emulating PlayStation 5. And then you have this, this shit going down between like Arabian style factions and traditional European style factions going at each other. And then they're talking about Sh uh, Shiva. And I go, wait a second. <laughs> wait, a, wait, a, wait a second here. And then you see a giant, you fucking see Titan. And I go, wait a second. And then they show Shiva and I go, is this Final Fantasy 16? Yes, it is, baby. Final Fantasy 16 was announced at the PlayStation 5 showcase. Uh, the summons are called icons. Uh, there's a parent. There's a popper in it, so that's always a good sign. That shows quality. Uh, there's a kid named Joshua. He's the king's son, I guess. You play as Joshua Shield. Uh, the combat's very fast paced. I, it looks a lot like 15, but it just seems faster paced than 15. Uh, you can easily combo melee attacks into spells. There's a big old Marlboro, uh, sick-looking dragoon, 
and it seems like it looks pretty bloody, uh, which makes me wonder if this is going to be the first rated M Final Fantasy game since Type Zero. Um, and it looks like Joshua can summon a phoenix. Ifrit looks pretty goddamn pretty cool. Uh, it's about guardian crystals, so maybe it's a part of the Nova Crystallis. Who knows? And the logo is beautiful. It is a thing of art. All the Final Fantasy logos are just absolutely stunning. And this one with, I think it's um, the Phoenix and Shiva, it just looks beautiful. Uh, it's going to be a PlayStation console exclusive, a PS5 console exclusive, but it will also be coming to PC. And then all footage from here on out is captured on a PlayStation 5. It's perhaps on actual hardware. So then we got more info on Spider-Man Miles Morales. Apparently Miles' mom is running for city council. It takes place one year after the first game. Two factions are feuding, Roxxon Energy and the Underground. Uh, the Tinkerer is the head of the Underground. Uh, it's got similar, if not a little faster paced combat compared to the original. Uh, sick beats while you're fighting, you got a stealth suit. That's coming out holiday 2020. If you get the digital deluxe version of the game, you get the original Spider-Man for free. And it is a PS5 upgraded version as well. Uh, next is the new game from Avalanche Studios and Port Key Games, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, the new Harry Potter game. Uh, it takes place in Hogwarts in the late 1800s. Uh, it doesn't just take place in Hogwarts. looks like you can go explore the world. Uh, it's got some zombies and some spooky ghosts. And that's coming out in 2021. Next is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Uh, it shows one of the first campaign missions. Boy, howdy, is the campaign look fucking dumb. I love it. It's... I think it looks so good. Oh, it's so stupid. It's great. It so it's about... They're on, like, this... This airport. And they're trying to take out this one dude. They're on a runway. And it ends up with a car chase. They're, they're in, like, a Jeep... And they're trying to take down a fucking plane that's trying to take off. And they end up doing it. And the 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 car flips like 18 times. And there's a lot of shoestings going on. So you can take human shields. And there are CXDs there. And you can do brutal takedowns. Oh man, it's great. It looks so dumb. I love it. Uh, next they showed Resident Evil The Village. Ethan, our main character from Seven, gets kidnapped by Chris and his goons, and it takes place in a creepy village. Go figure. There's a creepy old lady. It's still in first person. There's werewolves. And then they show the logo. And you remember you remember how a few weeks ago they said that we, we had a story about Resident Evil 8. They interviewed one of the guys from Capcom, and they go, yeah, no, the village is not Resident Evil 8, guys. Don't worry. It's definitely not the village, even though they outlined in the teaser trailer the V, the I, and both L's in village. They sure did. To show the Roman numeral a fucking eight. Well, hey, they did it again. Just like the first trailer. <laughs> Fuck off, Capcom. This is Resident Evil 8, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And then there is a shopkeep there. So then I put in all caps, what are you buying, stranger? And that's coming out in 2021. Next thing they showed off was Deathloop. It's similar. Uh, here's what I put. Similar stuff to what we've already seen. Nate can talk about this. Nate, go ahead. Talk about Deathloop. Okay. So, <laughs> so first and foremost, the graphics, they look great. It is not your uber detailed game, though. Like, it's... I would say they're, like, geometric kind of people. It's almost... It's almost like Grindhouse cell shaded Okay. That is a good way to put it. So, basically... So, put aside all of the other characters, there are two main, like, antagonist, antagonist, or protagonist, protagonist, depending who you want to vote for. And there's other people you can play in multiplayer, like, I believe, like, the technical, like, kind of linear storyline is this real grudge battle between the dude and the girl. We don't know if we, I don't think we know their names yet. We've learned names of other characters like Alex and um, Igor. Um, 
but there's this dude and this chick who do not fuck with each other and they're stuck on this like island or like this like so as far as we know it's kind of like an island but I, I, i'm thinking it might be like this experiment kind of thing that people are doing i have no real idea because they haven't given us much to work with um but basically if you don't kill someone in time things reset and if you have to kill the other person before you reset and like you're legitimately caught in a death loop if you die you reset if you survive you don't reset but you might reset like it's really really intense and it seems really really fun and i there i've looked it up i've tried to find like an actual synopsis of the game but there isn't one there isn't like a whole fucking like lowdown of how the game is and everything i i haven't found it but it is definitely something i'd recommend checking out uh it's made by bethesda so like they, they know what they're doing they know how to make a game um sure they do listen james I actually i think it's I, it's by the um it's by the people that made dishonored so it's by that mm-hmm. studio arcane works Kane. Kane. isn't that still technically bethesda oh yeah they're owned by bethesda but yeah, okay, okay. yeah it's a separate it is, company okay. Yeah, it's not Bethesda. Yeah, it's not Bethesda themselves working on it. Yeah, they just publish it. You know what? Uh, at E3, like a year or so ago, didn't they announce it was through Bethesda? Though, like that was like. Yeah, the, the, they're their publisher. Yeah, it's yeah. like um, it's like, Anthem, is by okay. Bioware, but EA publishes it. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I really recommend checking Death Loop out. Uh, find a trailer, watch it, and then watch it again because it'll make more sense. Um, or just find the one that was just recently played, which you'll probably find pretty quickly. That explains a little bit more of it. God damn Seems it! Like a really solid game. All the other characters kind of have their own little intermingling stories as well, which is also interesting. I so, just realized when I said Bioware, the very first thing that came to mind was Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Not like Dragon Age or Jade Empire or, or Star Dead Wars, Space. The Old or Republic. Dead Space. Dead Space wasn't Bioware. That was Visceral Games. Dead Space wasn't Bioware? I thought it was. Dead Space? No, that was Visceral. And then that became uh, EA Redwood Studios for three, and then they they EA killed it off like EA usually does. Yeah. Yeah. What game were you thinking of? I don't know. Well, Maybe you're thinking of Anthem. <laughs> All right, so, so then. All, all right, so I don't think they showed off a release date, but I would I would assume twenty twenty one. Um, next they showed off DMC five special edition featuring Virgil from Devil May Cry. It looks really good. It's Devil May Cry five. It's all okay. it is is it DMC five with all the DLC and Virgil. But we get Virgil. We get Virgil. Yeah, it's available launch at launch digitally. And I put, God, this soundtrack makes my PP so hard. Because it does. <laughs> Good ass soundtrack. It's a banger. You need to listen to a Little V's rendition of Devil Trigger. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, next, they had Oddworld Soulstorm, the latest game in the Oddworld franchise. Um, it's got the same gameplay as the original, the same side scrolling uh, platforming, puzzle platforming. And it looks a lot more bloody than the original games, at least from what I remember. Like, there's a little grinder grinding up people, and it's just big old pfft of blood, big old fountain. And the thing that made me really freak out about this was they used the fucking Star Wars font for the logo. So look up World Soulstorm logo into Google, and you'll know what I mean. Look of what? Oddworld Soulstorm. And then you can go into it... images. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Fucking thievery. It's just the Star Wars font. And I don't know how to feel about it. Like, does it look good? Sure. <laughs> it looks Is like it... Star Wars. Yo, bro, let me copy your homework? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's that's exactly... (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) 
at least for like the Star Wars Battlefront, like the latest Star Wars Battlefront games. It's the same goddamn logo. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront. Or same Odd font. World Soul Store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so the next thing, I, I don't, it's a new Five Nights at Freddy's games coming out for the PlayStation 5. Accidentally called that. Yeah. We, we were both like, what the fuck is this? I saw, I just saw a bear and I'm like, a bear in an astronaut suit. Yeah. And then lo and behold, a giant Five golden Nights Freddy Fazbear statue. Yep. Yeah, uh, I I don't know about this one, bud. The only thing I can't wait for is for Matt Pat to make like 800 more FNAF videos based off this game. See, I'm excited for the same thing, but Markiplier. Yeah, but here's the thing: Markiplier is entertaining. Matt Pat isn't. Wait, <laughs> why do you watch him? Oh, it's just another reason for me to shit on Matt Pat. Is he not great? No, he's not. Oh. This Fair time enough. on Game Theory. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Is Freddy Fazbear really uh, Sans Undertale? Ugh. Uh, hey, next was Dark Souls. Not fuck. Was Demon, Demon Souls, Souls Remasters? Remastered. It's Demon Souls, but it looks really good. <laughs> like it's... really good. And that's because it's by Bluepoint, and Bluepoint <laughs> makes solid remasters and ports of Sony titles. I think Bluepoint's actually owned by Sony. At this point. I believe so. Uh, probably the biggest announcement of the entire fucking event. Fortnite is coming to PlayStation 5 at launch with ray tracing. Wow. Whoa. Now for an actual surprise thing is PlayStation Plus collections. So. It's kind of like Game Pass. Sort of. It's included with your PlayStation Plus subscription from PS5, and you get these game you get games uh, that you could just play whenever. Uh, the available games at launch are God of War, which is a banger, The Last of Us Remastered, which is a banger, Uncharted 4, banger, Battlefield 1, I liked it so banger, Monhan World, fucking banger, Fallout 4, sure, Final Fantasy 15, pretty good. Ratchet and Clank 2016, banger. The Last Guardian, banger. Infamous banger. Second Son, banger. Days Gone, not bad. Bloodborne, still need to play it. Detroit Become Human, fuck off, David Cage. Batman Arkham <laughs> Knight, not a fan of the Arkham games, but pretty cool. Mortal Kombat 10, not a fan of the Mortal Kombat games, but cool. Persona 5, Persona! Until Dawn, fucking banger. RE7, banger, and that's all included with your PlayStation Plus subscription at launch. So they're kind of, maybe, sort yes. of, kind of doing something. It's like, like, so they're not doing a game service? like. But they are. <laughs> but they're just giving you the games? Yeah, you got one, but two, you got to pay for their service three, to, to use them still, so... Four, five, six, again, seven, eight... All right, just change a few things. Yeah, Nine. I guess they're not giving them to everyone all the time, so I guess yeah. that's the the terms of it. But... And there's nine of the... One, two, three, four, five, six... They're all PlayStation exclusives, nine, too, 10, aren't they? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17... 18. Nine, half of the list here are Sony first-party games. Or, well, Sony exclusives. PlayStation exclusives. God of War, Last of Us Remastered, Uncharted 4... Last Guardian, Ratchet and Clank, Infamous Second Son, Days Gone, Bloodborne, uh, and Until Dawn are all like exclu PlayStation exclusives. Bloodborne and Until Dawn are the only outliers. They're not. Um... Oh, and Persona Five. So ten of the nine are PlayStation exclusives. But um, I guess all but three are from Sony's first-party studios. All but three are by either Insomniac or Naughty Dog, for the most part. Oh, no. <laughs> Infamous Second Son's from, uh... Ah, uh, fuck. Who made the... Who made Ghost of Tsushima? Sucker Punch. And, uh... Uh, God of War is by Sony Santa Monica. 
Days Gone's by another comic. Actually, never mind. <laughs> There's some Naughty Dog in, uh, in uh, Insomniac games on here. But yeah, no, this that's a list. That is that is some. Those are good games. Those are some pretty good games. I'm just I'm a little disappointed that's Persona Five and not Royal Edition, but beggars can't be choosers. And then we get the final big thing: the prices of the PlayStation Five and PlayStation Five yeah. Digital, and when it's coming out. Finally, the arms race is over, and all it took was a leak on Twitter at, like, 2 in the morning <laughs> for the arms race to end. The Cold War has done. All right, so the PlayStation 5. will PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 5 Digital will be coming out November 12th for the U.S., Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea, and November 19th for the rest of the world, except for China. China's release date will be announced at a later time. Um, this is the first time, fun fact, this is the first time since I do believe the PS2 that Japan will be getting the PlayStation at the same time as the U.S. Japan, it's wild. Japan was like six or like three months after the U.S. for the PS4 and I think three or four months with the PS3, if I'm not mistaken. Japan got it late. Uh, but PlayStation 5 is going to be 499.99 USD, 499.99 euros, 449.99 pounds, 49,980 yen. And then the digital edition is going to be 399.99 USD, 399 euros, 359.99 pounds, and 39,980 yen. So there you go. It's going to be in line with the Series X in price, and the digital edition is going to be a little bit higher than the Series S, but you are getting the exact same system, just sans the disk drive. That's fair. And that is the PlayStation event, or so we thought, because Jim Ryan comes out on stage and says, well, he's there. He's like, uh, here we go. Finally, it took us long enough. Jesus Christ, you can stop yelling at us for releasing the price and the date. <laughs> but we have one more thing to show you. And then you hear Gregorian chants. Yeah. And you see a, a, a logo pop up <laughs> and things go on. And it says Ragnarok is coming 2021. God of War Ragnarok's coming out next year, baby. Dad of Boy 2 is going to be a thing. I think that game's going to be really fucking Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I'm extremely excited. Yeah. Hey, that sounds like a podcast minus the, uh, minus the uh, Monster Hunter Direct. Yeah. So that's cool. Sometimes. Let's get on to releases, shall we? Sure. I had, to think, I had to think there for a second. I was like, what do we do next? <laughs> All right. So this is up until September 28th. All right. So on the 22nd, Jet Set Knights comes out for the PS4. Tennis World Tour 2 comes out for the Xbox One and PS4. Pendragon comes out for the PC on the 22nd. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw comes out for the PS4 and Switch. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim comes out for the PS4. And on the 23rd, we got Unrailed coming out for the PC and the Switch. Twin Breakers, a... What's this called? Twin Breaker, a Sacred Symbol Adventure coming out for the Vita, too. Weird. Coming out for everything <laughs> and the PlayStation Vita. Uh, uh, Jet Set Knights coming out for the Xbox One on the 23rd. Store Castle Storm 2 coming out for the Xbox One on the 23rd. Drone Racing League Simulator coming out for, or DRL Sim, coming out for the Xbox One on the 23rd. Then on the 24th, we have Little Big Workshop coming out for the Xbox One. Gina Force coming out for PS4. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition coming out for Switch and PC. Tears of Ava coming out for PC and Xbox One. 
gothic what is the fuck is this called gothic murder adventure that changes destiny coming out for pc and ps4 on the 24th going under coming out for ps or pc and switch Embracelet coming out for the pc on the 24th serious sam 4 coming out for the pc on the 24th done greed coming out for the switch and ps4 on the 24th tennis world tour 2 coming out for the pc on the 24th Lost Ember coming out for the Nintendo Switch on the 24th. Then on the 25th, we have Panzer Dragoon Remake coming out for the PC. Jet Set Knights coming out for the Switch. Sentinels of Freedom coming out for the Xbox One on the 25th. Troll Hunters, Defenders of Arcadia coming out for PC and PS4 on the 25th. Nex uh, Nexamon Extinction coming out for the Xbox One on the 25th. Mafia Definitive Edition finally coming out. On the PC and PS4 and everything. Port Royal Force coming out for the PC and PS4 on the 25th. <laughs> Shotgun Farmers, a classic, coming out for the Xbox One on the 25th. Then we don't have anything until the 28th when Genshin Impact comes out for the PC and PS4. Back to you guys. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. <laughs> well, that sounds like a pot. What the fuck is Bacon Man and Adventure? That's coming out on the 29th. Uh, Rick and Morty Season 4 is coming out on the 22nd. Neat. Cool. Funniest shit I've ever seen. A uh, new season of the Great British Breaking Show is coming out on the 25th. Oh, hell yeah. Bob's, Bob's Burgers Season 11 is on the 27th. That uh, that's next week, though. Years. Um, they've had 11 seasons, so probably somewhere around that time. Between like nine and eleven, that's fucking insane. How old that show is already? Wow. All right. Anyway. All right. Uh, D DC's Talk Legend of Tomorrow right. season five is coming as well, and yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. Nice. All good, right. So good. Good stuff. What are we doing this week? Yeah. What's coming up? What's coming out, Mark? Uh, a lot of schoolwork for me, at least. But if you're interested in me watching me play video games at some point, whenever I get my streaming stuff set up, or just watching any kind of content that I make, you can see it on YouTube at Twitch at MarkDude701. But yeah, who knows what I'll end up doing. How about you, Nate? Um, well, I'm going to be filming an unboxing video of the Microsoft Duo and a day in the life, because why not? I have nothing else to do, and I'm going to have a brand new phone to play with, uh, at least for a day, because I am not, that's, that one's not mine, but I am going to run with it. I'm going to deck it out, get rid of the Microsoft operating system, not operating system, but Microsoft skin, and run a different launcher, because I don't like the Microsoft skin. This is one of my biggest complaint about that phone. Obviously, it's a Microsoft phone, so I'll probably, I'm going to put it on there anyway, but anyway, other than that. I'm probably playing some games. Uh, this week's probably going to be more filming than actually like doing any of this stuff. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm going to play some games with the friends. If I can get a bunch, if I can get enough people to play Among Us, I definitely want to play Among Us. <laughs> um, I'd like to have a full lobby of just like homies and shit. That'd be super cool. Uh, I'd like to play some more Siege again because I am rusty and I like I like playing that game. Yeah, honestly, nothing really over here. I am still figuring out what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's really, really nothing. If you want to watch anything that I do or may do, I would like to get back to playing Subnautica, but I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do right now. I am so lost in that that's game. The, that's the thing with Subnautica. You don't know what to do. Right now, I am currently trying to beat the clock, swim down as far as I can, and just gain more health and like more oxygen. But I keep running out of oxygen or getting eaten by sharks. And it's really fucking annoying. <laughs> um, but you can find me everywhere at Nathan Rivers. Uh, or I haven't changed my Twitch yet. That's still Gogo Master Gold. And yeah. How about you, James? Well, hey, if you want to watch me play video games, you can check me out at uh, twitch.tv slash Jimmy Noodles GG. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll get back in. You know what? I'm definitely getting back into Ghost of Tsushima this week. 100%. Keeping it a 100. Definitely no cap. And then maybe do some more uh, more speed runs of uh, who knows? Who knows what? But 
uh, if you miss a stream of mine and like check out the VOD or check out some of the other videos that I have on my wonderful YouTube channel, take a look at youtube.com slash Jimmy Noodles Gaming. And then if you want to see when I'm going live and, you know, just want to see what I'm retweeting, see me, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's no simp September, so I'm not going to be simping over anyone. But you can find me not simping over anyone and at Twitter at Jimmy Noodles GG. All right. Well, that's everyone. Sounds like a podcast. That does sound like a podcast. Uh, thank you all so much for watching uh, or listening, watching and or listening, depending on how you are consuming it's been this a rough content. Week. It has been a very <laughs> rough week, but we 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 stuck it through, and I think we did a good job this week. So. Definitely. Don't forget, if you'd like to support this, uh, hey man, it's your Podcast. favorite patron. Can you give me a shout? Can you give a shout out to my cousin? Says, says good old Jeffrey. Uh, it's his birthday and he's a huge fan. Yeah, what's hey, what's what's, what's 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 your cousin's name? At least someone's watching your chat, Nate. Someone's watching my chat. Me. I'm watching your chat. <laughs> That's why you're an admin. You're meant to do that stuff. <laughs> that, is, that is part of your job. We got <laughs> Damn it, I was hoping, I was hoping you would say that, Nate. Oh, that's a good one. Son of a bitch. Leaky bum. Oh, classic. Right, give him a shout out, James. Good old Lee Key Bum. Key Bum. Key Bum. Like key Bum. There's uh, the two the dots over the U, so it's like kiboom. Yeah, kiboom. All right, well, hey, uh, patreon.com slash level unlock podcast. Follow us on all the social medias Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter at what, Mark? You get shit. That's LVL Unlocked Pod. That's LVL Unlocked Pod. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bright and early if you work third shift. Ten, yeah. 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mondays now because that's what we're doing. I fucking guess, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah and scene. And, and scene. And scene. The train wreck has ended. Well, okay, bye. Okay, well, bye. I, still not as bad as when you and me did it, Nate. Still not as bad. Game.